Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's day 30 and it's almost the second day last of Halloween. Uh, I mean, I can't believe that October just came and flew by like that. Like, it's so crazy. What's happening with time? But I hope you guys are have fun. I really do have one more day to go and it's gonna be great. I think it'll be a perfect way to finish things up. So, I'm excited for it. I hope you guys are too. It's gonna be another wild adventure. <laughs> so, yeah. But otherwise, let's do my Halloween wrap up. Let's get going. So, the first book that I had read was The Chateau by Jacqueline Golders. A dream ghost trip to a luxurious French chateau and jump revolves in the deadly nightmare of secrets and murder. So, I gave this a 2.5 stars. I think the author was trying to do too much. There was murder, cancer, financial troubles, illegitimate children, holocaust, large inheritance, so on and so forth. It was just honestly too much. Like she should have just stuck like for one thing, which is murder, which should have been the main focus of the book. But it was just way too much. I also think that having the grandma saying the same thing all over again was redundant and annoying. Like she always say, I have something to tell you, and then nothing happens, and then in the next chapter, I have something to tell you. So I'm like, just get on with it. <laughs> so that was kind of really annoying. I also didn't get why the two girls, um, I kind of forgot their names. So, like, they thought that there was a murder, you know, potentially in the house. So why didn't they try to rescue their friends, like call for help or something? But they were just watching the clouds instead. So I'm like, you guys are gonna let your friends die? Okay, you do you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> in fact, like, yeah, they could have just called for help if they thought the murder could be in there, which most likely was. But like, yeah, I just felt really weird about that. So I also think there were too many poems. It was kind of hard to keep up as to what's happening. I also thought that there wasn't enough suspense in this book. But I did like the settings and like the atmospheric that kind of made up for that half star. So it really could have been done better, but I guess it wasn't it. And my next one is A House with Blue Bones by T. Kingfisher. A haunting uh, south and gothic. A house with good bones. A house with good bones that explores the dark, twisted roots, lurking just beneath the veneer of a perfect home and family. So I don't know how to feel about this book. I still don't know what to give out. Actually, I did put five stars, but I didn't color them in, so I just left it as undecided. Cause I really don't know how to feel about this book. <laughs> it's honestly a weird book, but the main problem was that Sam was being logical and. Refusing to see him what was obvious, there was also a penitentiveness from the author who kept hitting the same thing over and over again. The story wasn't bad, it was just the execution, it could have been done a lot better. I also didn't really like how the author constantly point out that Sam was fat. It was supposed to be joking, but it wasn't really, like, this is like early 2000s joke, with, you know, with a fat person. I'm like, come on man. Like, it just not it. Like, just stop doing that. So, I kind of think, like, the, the descriptions of bugs was also too much. I'm not afraid of, uh, which is funny, but, like, I'm not afraid of them, but I think, like, the way she describes it was honestly too much. And just the episode wasn't really necessary, and, like, the 75% of the book wasn't that great, and there wasn't that much of a build-up anyway, so I feel like Despite how the ending was, um, it still felt really flat and I wasn't really all that excited. Like, oh, like, it's, it's the build up and it just went Bee! So, it couldn't, the build up couldn't have been done better because there was nothing really to, left to be excited for. It just, it, honestly, it just felt flat. So, it could have been really better. My next book is The Sacrifice by Lin Chu Perico. An island of seers turns deadly when a frightening legend threatens to kill off to kill off visitors one by one. So I really love this. I give it a five stars, which is rare for me for horror books, as you can tell. <laughs> and so I really love the spookiness and the atmosphere of the book. The characters seem to be fine. And I love the lore and the history of the story. I think the creatures were also quite interesting and the story had many twists that I really liked. The one thing I didn't really like is how 
it took one page of for the, I think it was like a director at that point, to realize that it's actually dangerous, but he still proceeded to film, like, the, the, like this cave that they were in. Like, but like, they knew that it was dangerous, but like, ah, oh, no, it's fine. So, yeah, the plot was also kind of dragged towards the ending, and the ending could have been done better, but... I think this was also kind of eye-opening. Like, I mean, knew how bad Hollywood is, but like, it, this is also an eye-opening just because, like, it kind of shows you what people will do for fame and money. They will literally put lives, like, other people's lives in danger just for the sake of made it fame, like, money and fame. So, it's sad, but it's the truth. So, but yeah, so I feel like that's what how I felt for this book too. Like, I already know Hollywood is bad, but that's a show what money and fame can do, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> My next book is Looking Glass Sound by Katriana Ward. In a London cottage overlooking the windswept main course, Wilda Howell begins the last book he will ever write. In his story of his childhood summer companions and the killer that stalked the small New England town of the body they found at the home of the discovery, echoing down the decades, and of Sky, Wyler's one time best friend, who stole his unfinished memoir and turned it into a loved best selling novel, Looking Glass Sound. I kind of left this undecided as I don't know how to read this book. It's one of those books where it has a book within a book. Yeah, and that also confused me because, because I didn't really know what was happening. So I was really confused as to what was happening and I had trouble following the first 50% and I, and I had trouble following and like the first 50% was okay as it was interesting but then after that it really went downhill. Like there were so many identity changes and it was like, oh my god. Okay, who is this guy? Who is this person? There were like so many identity changes. I honestly kind of keep track as to who was who. So, and there were many suspenses and the plots, uh, and like the plot was layered. I didn't mind the writing and the descriptions was great, but there was a lot of past and present events changing in a book within a book, as I said before. So like the whole thing was really confusing, like this plot was the actual author of Katrina. Like even this plot was ambitious, I can see that, but like it was just so confusing. I just, I honestly didn't really know what was happening in all honesty, but kudos for the author for making such an ambitious plot. So, get for her, honestly. My next book is The Night in the Library by Emma Jurisic. One night locked in the library, what can go wrong? On the night before graduation, a seven students gather in the basement of the of the university's rare books library. They're not allowed in the library after closing time, but it's the perfect place for the ritual they want to perform. One bone from the Greeks said to free those who take part in it from the fear of death. And what better time to seek the wisdom of ancient gods than in the hours before they were scattered in different directions to start their real lives. So I gave this 2.5 to 3 stars. Like honestly the plot, the premise sounded good, right? But I think the art, like the book did not live up to the plot. I felt like I read something completely different. So it could have been better. There were so many characters and the whole bickling between characters were tiring and like the self-pity was also and honestly like overall there was just really immature behavior from each of the characters. I couldn't really stand them except maybe Faye I think her name was. I think she was alright. But um, I kind of liked the Greek mythology aspect but like the plot I felt it was too messy. And there were too many plot twists, that, and also the story was also kind of repetitive, but I did like the atmospheric setting, so it felt really cool, you know, library after closing hours, that's kind of divine. <laughs> I want to do that one day to go read a book after hours, so I don't know, it's like, I know, it's a dream come true, I'm hoping it will be, <laughs> but honestly that would never happen, in all honesty, so. And yeah, the book just couldn't have been better. It was just flat. So it could have been better. My next book is The House of Last Resort by Christopher Golden. Across Italy there are many half empty towns, nearly abandoned by those who migrate to the coast or to cities. 
The beautiful crumbling hilltop of town of Virginia is among them, but Miss Mayors has taken drastic measures to rebuild, selling abandoned homes to everyone in the world for a single euro, as long as the buyer promises to live there for at least five years. It is a no-brainer for American couple Tommy K. Pokiski both worked remotely, and Virginia is the home of Tommy's grandparents, his closest living relatives. It feels like an American convention, an opportunity that young couple will be crazy not to seize, but from the moment they move in, we both feel a shadow has fallen on them. Tommy's grandmother is furious, even a little frightened when she realizes which house they bought. So I actually did enough this page at 98 pages, so I did not get through this book at all. Like, am I just so boring? And I didn't really quite understand as to why Grandmother was really furious when one of the characters was trying to explain to them, like, why this house was bad. So I, I kind of wish that Grandmother would just, like, chill out a little bit, but that was really annoying. Just, like, the Grandmother just constantly yelling, like, don't tell them. So, like, I, but I'm like, okay, but I want to know why. It's dangerous. So, it's so dumb. But, um, yeah, I really couldn't get into it. I felt bored, and the book was so slow. I really liked the creepy scenes and the creepy hours. I think the dialogue could have been better. Um, and I didn't really like Tommy and Kate. They were so annoying, honestly. Like, they were, like, they were in for, like, a party talking about... Like, they were talking about some stuff, like, all over again. It's like really also annoying. The whole dynamic of the family left weird. Tommy's Nona kept yelling at Tommy to speak in English, even though Tommy knew, knew some Italian. So like, which one is it? I don't know. It's like, one thing Nona's like, no, you have to speak English. And the other one's like, no, you have to speak Italian. Like, which one is it, woman? Calm down. <laughs> And so like the whole time Tommy and Kate were complaining about how the friends were never moved to Italy, they were also sleep like there was also sleepwalking in the book, but like the way how it was introduced was really weird. Like the two also acted pretty privileged. Plus Tommy's family was you know, like they lived in Italy, so they didn't really move to like a new city. And so and like they really didn't, you know, like have a new life to begin with, so it didn't really make sense. But also, why did the as I said before, like why did grandma was upset with them moving into the house, but then getting mad when Marcelo tried to explain them the history. So that was what I was saying at the beginning. I just didn't like the book, and the characters were really enjoyable, and all honesty, like, all oh, I just complain, and, oh, I wish you couldn't live here, and no, 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 like, so, yeah, Tommy and Kate were really annoying people, so I did not like them at all. My next book is The Overnight Guest by Helen Gunnenkoff. A woman receives an unexpected visit during a deadly snowstorm. She thought she was alone. True crime writer Riley Locke doesn't mind being snowed in at the isolated farmhouse where she retreated to write her new book. A cozy fire, complete silence, it would be perfect. If not for the fa fact that decades earlier at this very house, two people were murdered in cold blood and a girl disappeared without a trace. So I give it three stars. I found this book had a little lot of coincidence happening. So it was a really horrible book, I don't know, but a lot of the stuff was like really coincidence. And so I did like enjoy like the first part of the book. I thought it was entertaining, but this book had too many coincidences, and it went downhill after that. Um, a few coincidences were like cell phone broken to pieces and line line being out, so we can't call for help. The author discovers more child freezing in freezing as she was walking, and you know things like that. So it just was really everything was like really convenient. And like a malfunctioning gun, I'm like, that's like one of the most cliche things ever. Um, but, um, yeah, so... I didn't really like the conflict between the two characters at the end. It could have been better. And as I said, the cliche with the whole malfunctioning gun, that was so stupid in all honesty. It could have been handled better. Like, the only thing that I left with the atmosphere, I didn't really find the twist shocking and the mystery was honestly so basic so yeah but like why would you walk in a blizzard so i don't know like it would be freezing so it's that was weird but yeah my last book is the handmaid's Tale by margaret atwood offered 
that is a handmaid in the Republic of Gilead. She may leave the home of the commanders, but if one's need to walk to food markets or sign and now pictures instead of words because women are no longer no longer allowed to read. She must lie on her back once a month and pray that the commander makes her pregnant. Because in an age of declining birds, Alfred and the other handmaids are violent only if the authorities are liable. Alfred can remember the years before when she lived in mean love with her husband, Luke, when she played with and protected her daughter, when she had a job, money of her own, and access to knowledge, but all of that is gone now. So this is one of the other books I think left at 214, 214 pages. I was so bored with this book, I felt like nothing was happening, in all honesty. Like, there was, it was quite a struggle to even try to finish this book. There was no explanations for anything, they were only given when we are really into the story. And it was annoying. I really honestly wish explanations were like happening throughout the book. And not just, okay, here's an explanation when we're at the end of the book. I'm like, stop doing that, please. <laughs> But, um, yeah, like, there was this full-scale change that went across the society and happened in, like, maybe eight or years ago. So, like, how does that make sense? Eight or year, eight years? I felt like that should have been a lot longer. But, I don't know. Eight or year? Eight or nine years? I don't really see that happening, you know, honestly. But whatever. The main character, I found her to be too blonde. The plot was quite really uneventful, like honestly nothing was happening. For a book to be like written in the 80s, it did felt modern, like the way how it was written, it felt modern. So that was that, like the whole mess up didn't really see it that great. So yeah. And honestly the writing also felt basic I feel like, which is nothing wrong about like it could have been you know, had more oomph to it, if you know what I mean. Like, to make it more lavish, I guess, but... And also felt too basic. Um, I also wanted to explore the world of the odd woman and, like, and, like the odd babies. Like, those actually really sounded interesting, but we just weren't given enough exploration of that. And there was just really a little world building, and I wanted to know more about the world as well, but... Everything was just given to us like so little, but apparently you get more throughout the book, but obviously I would never see it because I just didn't want to read it, like it was just boring, so yeah. Okay, and that's all the books I have read in October, so I think that was about 8 books I read, something like that. I do have to read one more book for tomorrow for day 31. Which is exciting. The location that I'm going to just to read for that book is something else. <laughs> but, um, yeah, otherwise, I hope you guys really enjoyed the book of me. This was really fun to do. It, is, it does take a lot out of me because I'm constantly uploading, but it happens once a year. So, that's all fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let me know what was your favorite part of Book Away or if you have any ideas if you would like to see in Book Away, let me know. Uh, I am still planning out my next year Book Away, so it's gonna be fun. But um, yeah, I, I hope you guys will like Book Away this year. And you know, and please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you tomorrow for the finale. Bye bye.